hello there all kate back here and welcome welcome to this channel we are cruising together with ncl from athens to athens greece cruise on a norwegian getaway goes by exact name of greek isles santorini mykonos and istanbul cruise sailing between july and september embark on norwegian getaway and seize every moment on board discover different amazing destinations each day during your cruise in total we will visit nine athens and thessaloniki in greece izmir and two days in istanbul turkey and then back to greece mykonos paris crete rhodes santorini and back to athens Norwegian Getaway offers an amazing luxurious experience for all passengers with wide range of amenities including spa, fitness center, theater, comedy club, casino, nightclubs and diverse dining options. The ship also offers a variety of activities and excursions to keep passengers entertained, ensuring memorable cruise experience. But here I will also share with you the information about the ports, where to go, what to do, whether or not to book with NCL so you could get a better experience while saving your money. So we arrived to Athens two days in advance. We stayed in Hilton and took a cab to a port. It turned out to be cheaper than a bus transfer offered by NCL. Yes, NCL offers bus transfers from Hilton directly to the port. Unless you're traveling alone, it makes no sense to book it with NCL because for two passengers, it is already cheaper to book a cab. And now all of the attention to Athens. Athens, a stunning capital of Greece, a bustling coastal city in the Mediterranean. It is the oldest and southernmost capital in Europe. With a population of over 3 million people, it is the eighth largest urban area in the EU. The city has a rich history dating back to 3,400 years and it's known for its democracy, arts, education, and philosophy. There is certainly a lot to see, and city is very, very easy to navigate and easy to get around, especially because there are options of hop-on, hop-off buses here. It was named after Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom and war. It played a significant role in shaping European civilization, including ancient Rome. Today, Athens is a metropolis serving as a hub for various aspects of Greek life. It is a major global city and an economic center in southeastern Europe. The city's rich history is still visible through its ancient monuments, including the iconic Parthenon. Alongside these, Athens also boasts Roman, Byzantine and few Ottoman monuments, showcasing its diverse historical influences. The city's core has remained intact over the centuries, preserving its rich history. Notably, Athens is proud to house two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, namely the Acropolis of Athens and the medieval Daphne Monastery. So there is certainly a lot to see and experience in Athens, and I really hope you would enjoy the city. Once you're done sightseeing, then it's the time to check in to the magnificent getaway. But what I recommend always to do is to choose the earliest check-in time. That's usually between 9.30 and 11.30, depending on the port. That way you'll save the time and will get a one full day on board of the ship, which is a bonus in and out of itself. So we got a really nice balcony cabin that included three specialty dinings, which was really, really nice because we love specialty dinings. So those are slightly better dinings that you have as complementary options. And that evening we went to, a magnif to see a magnificent show burn the floor. The next morning we were already in Thessaloniki had a breakfast and a cup of coffee. As I've mentioned before, the complimentary coffee in NCL is not particularly good. So I had another much better cup of coffee in the port and was ready to discover the beautiful city.
Thessaloniki is actually a fascinating city. The best part about it is that it's very conveniently located, so you absolutely don't have to order anything with NCL because the port is pretty much in the downtown. So as you exit the port, on your right would be pretty much most of the sites straight center. So it's quite easy to navigate and there are only a few sites that you really want to see, in particular the White Tower that I will talk about in just a moment and it would be to the right as you exit the port so you can actually see it. So I wouldn't really feel that there is a need to order anything unless you have a particular interest in something farther away. So Thessaloniki is a fascinating city. The city was founded in 315, the most interesting part by whom and named after whom. So it was founded by Cassandra of Macedon, was named after his wife Thessalonica and his wife was a daughter of Philip II of Macedon and the sister of Alexander the Great. That lasted nearly five centuries. Thessaloniki is a popular tourist destination in Greece. National Geographic magazine listed Thessaloniki as one of the top tourist destinations worldwide in 2013. Thessaloniki is situated on the Thermaic Gulf of the Aegean Sea and is a bustling Greek port city, with remnants of Roman, Byzantine and Ottoman civilizations scattered throughout. Anapoli is the upper town and particularly rich in the historical landmarks. Such landmarks include the famous White Tower. It's a significant monument and a museum located in the waterfront of Thessaloniki, a walking distance from the port. This iconic tower replaced the ancient Byzantine fortification that was reconstructed by the Ottoman Empire to strengthen the city's fortress after the capture in 1430. Throughout the Ottoman rule, the tower served as notorious prison and witnessed numerous mass executions, including many famous revolts during the Mahmud II reign. In 1912, Greece took control of the city and the White Tower underwent significant renovation. Then it became the symbol of Thessaloniki and obviously no longer prison. After returning to the boat, we had a wonderful dinner, then a drink, and then another with live music. And then we enjoyed, and then we enjoyed, and then we enjoyed a wonderful show. So overall, every evening pretty much repeated the pattern. We would go for dinner, a drink, and a show, and it made holidays truly amazing because it was really eventful every single night, and we loved it. And in the meanwhile, we were already making our way to Izmir. We actually spent a lot of time in the top deck, just enjoying arrival to this beautiful city. Izmir is a bustling metropolitan city located in the western coast of Anatolia and serves as the capital of Izmir province. It holds the title of being the third most populous city in Turkey following Istanbul and Ankara. And it is the largest urban area along the Aegean Sea, with over 3,000 years of recorded urban history and up to 8,500 years of human settlement since the Neolithic, Izmir certainly has a rich historical background. In ancient times, the city was known as Smyrna, the name that was used in English and other languages until around 1930s, when the original Greek name was gradually replaced by internationally recognized Turkish counterpart Izmir. Prior to 1923, population exchange between Greece and Turkey was really great, so Izmir had significant Greek population. Situated advantageously at the head of the Gulf along the western Anatolian coast, Izmir has been a key mercantile city in the Mediterranean Sea for much of its existence. What's great about the city, again, the port is very conveniently located. If you just want to see Izmir, you literally can walk to the downtown, it's about a kilometer away, so you don't really have to book anything with NCL in this case either. However, if you would like to enjoy beautiful Ephesus, which is more than an hour drive away, then of course I would recommend booking something with NCL. And here, let's see what we can see in beautiful Ephesus. Enjoying the video? Subscribe for more of such content. Ephesus is a historic city in western Turkey, is a testament to the grandeur of the past. Once a thriving center of art, science and religion, it offers visitors a captivating journey through time and place truly is stunning, probably the best ruins I've seen thus far. 
you cannot even call them ruins. You know, they're so magnificent. They don't even seem to be ruins like. Of course, the key place here would be the library of Celsus, the great theater and the temple of Artemis. The Library of Celsus, with its intricate facade, represents Ephesus' intellectual significance. It's a beautiful building, very, very well preserved, and probably the highlight of the whole experience. The Great Theater is quite impressive as well. It's one of the largest ancient theaters in the world, was a hub of performances, debates, contests, and capable of accommodating up to 25,000 spectators, so quite an impressive theater. Ephesus was a city of religious belief and scientific advancements. Housed famous temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the world, though only a few columns remain today, its historical and spiritual significance lingers. So you can sort of feel it in the air. Beyond religion, Ephesus, of course, was a center of intellectual pursuit, which we already witnessed with the library. So a few facts about the name Ephesus. Legend has it that Ephesus was established by Prince Androclus, quite a name, in the 11th century BC. He sought guidance from Delphi oracles who prophesied that a boar and a fish would lead him to the new settlement that would be the best settlement of all or something in the lines. While cooking a fish, fish jumped out and started a fire in the nearby bushes from which a boar emerged. So this was the place where Ephesus was built. And now the legend claims that Ephesus was founded by the Amazons, the city named after their queen, Aphasia. Returning to the boat, we were very, very excited to be back because it was our night for the specialty dining. We went to Le Bistro. That's a French restaurant, which we absolutely love. <laughs> That's our favorite place on uh, board of Norwegian. Most of the Norwegian ships actually have Le Bistro as a specialty dining, and I would highly recommend it. They serve really, really good French cuisine. Then we went to a concert to, um, to our favorite pub and enjoyed the rest of the evening just listening to music and checking out the shows as always. And the next day we were already in beautiful Istanbul. This was very exciting because we had two days in Istanbul, so there was plenty of time to enjoy slow breakfast to drinks in the morning. Who cares? I'm on holiday. So we had a jacuzzi and a couple of drinks and very, very slow and very tasty breakfast. and we were ready to discover beautiful Istanbul. As I said, the best part about it, two days, so you really don't have to sweat about making it back to the boat. On top of that, it is perfectly located right next to the old town. So you can actually literally walk to the first key sites like this tower, for example. Even better part about it, the Hope on Hope of bus has actually gallop a port stop. So once you leave the port, you will find right there the stop of hop of hop on bus you'll buy a ticket and you're good you're good to go for the whole day you can check out istanbul so istanbul is the largest city and the main seaport of turkey has a rich history it has served as a capital for both byzantine and ottoman empire however is not a capital of turkey Situated in a triangular peninsula between Europe and Asia, Istanbul has played various roles throughout its existence. It has acted as bridge connecting different cultures and religions for generations, while also serving as a barrier during the times of conflict. For over 2,500 years, Istanbul has been highly sought after city, still is today. During the Byzantine Empire, Istanbul was known as Constantinople, was a center of power and wealth. The city was adorned with magnificent churches palaces and monuments showcasing the empire's grandeur. The Hagia Sophia in particular of course is a masterpiece of Byzantine architecture and still stands as a symbol of Istanbul's rich history. 
1453, the Ottoman Empire, led by Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror, captured Constantinople and transformed it into the capital of their empire. Under Ottoman rule, Istanbul flourished as cultural, political and economic center. The empire sultans built stunning mosques, including Blue Mosque and many others. Enjoying this video? Subscribe for more content. Hagia Sophia, absolutely a must a visit, arguably the most interesting building in Istanbul, originally built in 6th century by Emperor Justinian I. Hagia Sophia showcased the power and wealth of the Byzantine Empire, originally was built of course as a Christian church. It became the center of religious life in Constantinople. In 1453, however, it was converted to the mosque by Ottoman Empire. In 1935, it became a museum to bridge the gap between Islamic heritage and circular aspirations. However, recently in July 2020, the Turkish government turned it back into a mosque, sparking international debate and controversy. And the next day we actually spent at sea on the way to Alexandria. It was a great day to relax. We had a very slow breakfast. Spent some time by the pool. The weather got warmer a bit later, but then it got colder again. So we got into the hot tub with a few drinks, which was really, really nice. got a pass into a spa so that's a separate thing it's not for free but there are saunas and separate small swimming pools and jacuzzis is a worthy investment if you're a sauna fan like myself then we took a tour around the ship checked out some of the casinos and had a wonderful dinner And eventually wrapping it up with the Broadway show, which was amazing. Highly recommend not missing any of the entertainment that Getaway has to offer. We were in Mykonos, the long-awaited port. We arrived there a bit later than to the other ports, so we had time for slow breakfast. I spent some time by the pool, and that's where we had the breakfast. And then we took a small boat to Mykonos itself. Mykonos is simply stunning. With around 10,000 inhabitants, Mykonos is home to a vibrant town of Cora, and that's exactly where you are. Again, here you don't need to book anything with NCL. It's extremely straightforward. If you just want to spend time in Mykonos, and that's what you're seeing right now, you get a small boat that you order a day in advance with a reception. It's usually free. It gets you right there. You can walk around Mykonos and see everything by yourself. It's all a walking distance away. However, if you want to see a stunning Dallas, again, you don't have to book anything with NCL because there are local providers right there. As you step out of the boat, you will see the local tourist agents that would be selling your trips to Dallas and about Dallas I will tell you more in just a moment so Cora is known for narrow streets whitewashed buildings and windmills it attracts visitors from all over the world island is nicknamed as the island of the winds naturally because it is fairly windy here Strolling through Cora is a delightful experience with many vibrant blooming flowers. The town's layout is intentionally designed to captivate visitors with surprise in every turn. Cora is also home to historical landmark and cultural sites such as windmills. The island itself has rich history, has been inhabited since the ancient times and served as trading and transit hub, especially for the nearby island of Delos. Speaking of Delos, Delos is a captivating Greek island that is just short a boat ride away from Mykonos. Absolute must see for anyone who wants to understand a little bit more about the history of Greece. It is UNESCO World Heritage Site. 
and on one of the Greece's most significant archaeological sites, renowned for its well-preserved ruins and fascinating history. Dallas was once a religious and commercial center of ancient Greece. As you wander through the ruins, you will encounter impressive structures and monuments that narrate the Dallas past. The Terrace of the Lions, the row of iconic marble lion statues, then there is a symbol of Ireland's former grandeur and were there for protection purposes. The House of Dionysus, adorned with stunning mosaics, provide a glimpse into lavish lifestyle of ancient inhabitants. The Temple of Apollo, dedicated to Greek god of music and prophecy, is a majestic site that highlights the island's religious significance. So this is actually the boat that took us to Dallas. It was perfectly proper boat, perfectly safe. It took us there and uh, they gave us three or four hours. And then in uh, the time that we agreed on, we had to go back. And then the boat took us back to Mykonos. Extremely easy. For more useful tips on how to make the most out of your cruise experience, check out my top 10 tips for cruising. will be down in the description and here on the screen. And just to be sure that you understood everything, so let's take a look here. Right now we have um, sort of a view from afar. So the boat with NCL will take you roughly here. And this is Cora, like this is the main point. You could see right there the windmills, very picturesque site, certainly worth walking there. And that's roughly 15 minutes walk. And right there you could buy tickets to Dallas. It's that simple. Coming back to the boat, tired but super happy it was a lovely day as always i love cruising for that everything is organized for you you can do so much more than you would have ever been able to do on your own and have so many more experiences that is really it beats many other types of travel for me so we went to jacuzzi and decided to warm up because as you remember mykonos is the windy island and it is in fact really windy there then we went to wonderful dinner and back to that pub with the band that we absolutely loved. Uh, the next day we were in long-awaited Port Paros. That's actually a port I've never been to. So I was really, really excited seeing it. Had a great cup of coffee uh, close to the port as always. That's the first thing I do. And the port is actually walking distance to beaches of Livadia and Peralia. So if you would just like to chill on the beach and nothing else, you're good. <laughs> so, But if you want to see the lovely town of Naosa, that's the one that you'll be seeing here throughout the video, it's a 15 minute drive. No public transportation, more than two hours walk, so not an option. So it would probably be better to book with NCL. Paris is a beautiful Greek island located in the central Aegean Sea, famous for its fine white marble. Paris was once renowned for highest quality marble, leading to the name to the term Perian being used to describe marble or china. While there, while there are now many abandoned marble quarries and mines on the island, Paris is mostly known today for been a popular tourist destination. The most picturesque fishing village or town in the northern coast of the island is the beautiful, with a beautiful harbor, is the village of Naosa. Naosa has the island's best restaurants and boutique hotels, results in being a very, very busy place and truly loved place by visitors. I personally really like Naosa. Parikia is also an option. Uh, both of them are possible. Parikia is actually closer to the ports. So if you want to visit Parikia, I think it is still a walking distance. And we are in Crete. Crete is Greece's largest, most populated island. Historically, Crete, of course, was the center of Europe's first advanced civilization, the Minoans from 2700 to 1420 BC. It was later conquered by Mycenaean civilization from mainland Greece. Overall, the Minoan civilization thrived here from 3000 to 1100 BCE. 
It was named after Minos, a ruler that is mentioned in Greek legends. The Minoans reached their peak around 1600 BCE. They were known for their impressive cities, trade, and the use of writing. Their art featured intricate pottery and stunning frescoes depicting circular and religious scenes. The particularly common motifs were of the snake and the bull. The bull lipping had religious significance. Minoan civilization also influenced the later Mycenaean culture that emerged around 1500 BCE. Throughout its history, Crete has been ruled by various powers, including Rome, Byzantine empires, Arabs, Venetians, Ottomans, you name them, they've probably been there. In 1898, Crete gained independence from Ottomans and officially became part of Greece in December 1913. In between that time period, Crete was an independent country of its own. The island is predominantly mountainous, with prominent mountain range stretching from west to east, making it a very, very beautiful place for both beach holidays and hiking. In this particular case, we booked the excursions with NCL because I was concerned of not being able to make it there, as I really wanted to see the remnants of Minoan civilization, so we didn't risk it. Uh, the evening we spent with a great dinner and a show. And the next day we were in Rhodes, which was wonderful, had a slow breakfast and a much better cup of coffee and a cake in Rhodes itself, ready to explore the island. We are in Rhodes, a wonderfully beautiful island in Greece. Here you don't need to book anything with NCL, the old town is literally 15 minutes a walk away from the port. So feel free to do everything on your own. It's very easy to navigate. There's an old town, there are a couple of things to see, but they're all right there. I'll tell you a lot more in just a moment. So Rhodes is the main city on the island of Rhodes, is a captivating place in southeastern Greece. It was once a thriving maritime city and a trading hub known as Colossus of Rhodes. Today Rhodes continues to impress with its Gothic and Ottoman architecture, especially the medieval old town recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Site. Rhodes offers vibrant atmosphere of bustling markets, charming cafes and very lively nightlife. Today, Rhodes continues to captivate visitors with its rich history and architectural wonders. And of course, Castello. Castello is known as the Palace of Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes. It's a medieval castle in Rhodes. Built in 14th century, it served as a stronghold and residence for the Grand Master. The castle showcases Gothic architecture with stone walls, turrets, and intricate details. Inside, visitors can explore lavish halls filled with historical artifacts and opulent furnishings. The Great Hall in particular is very, very pretty. That evening we went to La Bistro French restaurant as our specialty dining choice. It always has been our top choice. We love this restaurant, great menu with a lot of fantastic options. So if you're into French cuisine, that certainly should be the choice for you as well. Then we had a drink. And then we spent the night at Sid Norman's Poor House. It's a pub, a must do on board of Norwegian Getaway. Not for the drinks, but for the shows. The shows, they're absolutely incredible. The band there is hands down one of the best bands I've ever seen. Each night offers a unique performance. So I suggest getting there early, maybe 30 minutes before opening, just to get in. It's that popular. And we are in Santorini, probably long awaited for it for many of you, for me certainly it was. Santorini is known as Thera, classic Greek Thera, stunning island in the southern Aegean Sea. It is the largest island in the small circular archipelago formed from a caldera. Santorini is famous for the Minoan eruption, one of the biggest volcanic eruptions in history. Uh, today it is the most active volcanic center in the south Aegean. 
the name Santorini was given uh, in the 13th century and was derived from the name of an old church. But the most interesting place here would be Oya. Oya, also known as Yai, a charming village in Greece, South Aegean region. Again, here you don't need to book anything with NCL, as once you step out of the boat, you would be provided with plenty of offers by local tourist agents to go to Oya. You would take a boat, and then they would give you three or four hours in Oya, and then you can take a bus back, and then cable car down. It's actually really, really simple, and it would cost you the fraction of the price of what NCL would charge you. So I've done it twice and it was perfectly fine. Oya exudes timeless charm, perched on a cliff, offers stunning views on the Aegean Sea and neighboring volcanic islands. Famous for its mesmerizing sunsets, certainly worth seeing, I had coffee and a cake and had an amazing view and I spent 40 minutes there just sitting there marveling at the sun and the view. Oya is famous for its traditional architecture that seamlessly blends in the natural surroundings, predominantly white and blue colors. The village is a haven for art lovers and galleries showcasing local art. Oya also boasts a vibrant culinary scene with numerous restaurants serving delicious Greek cuisine. Adventure seekers, and if you have time, if you want to stay in Oya longer, of course, there are hiking trails and boat trips and whatnot. For the time that you have of a few hours, at least you can really experience the feel of the place within the village itself. That evening was very exciting for us because we finally did our second specialty dining in Ocean Blue, Deck 8. That is one of the three specialty dinings that we did. When you had a balcony cabin, you're given three specialty dinings. So uh, this one was in a delightful seafood restaurant. Ocean Blue truly gives you an experience of luxury dining at a high-end restaurant. Food is exceptional, service is impeccable, and they're very knowledgeable waiters who are well-versed in their selection of wines who will be able to pair best wines for you for every dish. We really, really enjoyed the experience. And then we went to a bar, I had a chocolate martini, which was lovely, and we spent the rest of the evening on our own balcony, marveling the sunset. The next day we were back in Athens. Again, we simply took a cab, we left the port, took a cab all the way to the airport this time. And again, it was much, much cheaper than the transfer that NCL has offered. If you're traveling alone, though, it might make sense to just travel with them via bus because it's roughly the same just on the, the taxi fare. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the information was helpful. If you want more tips, check out my other videos about cruising. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to put the like and see you soon.